In this video, we're going to learn about Drizzle ORAM. We're going to talk about how to define your schema using Drizzle, generating database migrations, writing queries, the local development workflow when working with Drizzle, and how you can use Drizzle in CI for preview deployments and to deploy to production. Now, this video is going to give you the necessary foundation for working with Drizzle if you're considering it for your next project. Now, Drizzle supports multiple databases, but of course, we're going to be using Postgres through Neon. And we'll also cover how you can include Neon's database branching as part of your workflow. And yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Drizzle has three components. The ORM itself, which offers both a relational and SQL-like query APIs. And we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. There is Drizzle Kit, which is Drizzle's migrations toolkit. So you use it to generate database migrations. And there's Drizzle Studio, which is a GUI for exploring the data that's inside your database. So let's actually go to a project that uses Drizzle to see how the different pieces fit together. So right now I'm in my project and this is a simple API that's built using Bun and TypeScript. So actually if I go to the index.ts file that's in my source directory, you'll see that I'm using Hono. And Hono, you can think of it as a modern version of Express. And I just have a single API endpoint that accepts get requests at the index route. And I'm just returning some JSON. And we're actually going to change this hard-coded JSON with data that's coming from a Neon database. But we'll do that a bit later. And first, let's actually talk about how Drizzle works at a high level. When developing locally, you first define your database schema using TypeScript. And from the TypeScript definition of the different tables and relations, you can generate a SQL migration. You can then apply this migration to your local Postgres instance, or if you're using Neon, you can use a branch. Now, once you're happy with your changes, you'll open a pull request, which includes the SQL migration. Now, in your CI/CD workflow, you'll apply the same migration to a preview or a staging database. And if you're working with Neon, you can create a branch as part of your workflow. And finally, once the code is merged, you'll apply the database migrations to your production database, or if you're using Neon, your primary branch. Now, let's actually see Drizzle in action. So in my project, I have a directory called DB, and inside it, I have a file called schema.ts that contains the database schema for my project. So here, we actually have three tables, users, posts, and comments. Now, for us to actually define a table using Drizzle, we use the PG table function. And this function takes the name of the table we want to create, and then the different columns that this table should have are specified as an object. So here we're saying we want a table called users, and this users table will have a, an ID column with a type serial, and the name of this column will be ID. This is the actual name in the database, and this will be the primary key for this table. And then we want to have a name and an email, both of type text, both not null. And then we have created at, updated at, and you'll notice that here, the name of the column that's in the database actually has different casing um, than the object here. So when we're actually writing queries, we'll be able to use, you know, like camel case, while the actual table name will be in snake case, which is very convenient. And here we're setting a default value to now for the created at and updated at. Now for the post table, we actually have a very similar setup. The difference is here. We actually have a foreign key. So we're saying that you know, each post is, is associated with a user. So we're saying that each post will have a user ID of type integer, and this column will be called user underscore ID, and this should be not null, and it should reference the ID that's in the users table. So actually, if I command click users here, you'll see that I jump back up here. And yeah, same thing for comments. It's the same thing. I have a comments table. At each comment will have an ID and text. And we have also a post ID and a user ID. So yeah, now I actually generated the necessary like database migration for this schema before. So I have a migrations folder containing this initial schema. And I generated it using Drizzle Kit. And the way it works is I have it installed as a dev dependency here, and I have a script that called dbgenerate. So I can do bun dbgenerate that will call drizzlekit, and then drizzlekit, it will generate a database schema for Postgres. 
and I'm specifying the location of my schema. So here I'm saying dash dash schema, and then it's located in source db schema.ts. So it's right here. And then I'm specifying an output directory. Now this is actually optional. And if you don't specify it, then the generated, like the folder that will contain the generated migrations is called drizzle and it will be in the root of the project. However, I just like keeping the migrations folder under the DB folder. So yeah, so let's say for example, now I actually want to add a created at and updated at fields to the common stable. So I'll add them. And now I need to generate the database migration. So I'll do bun db generate. And you'll see that we now have a new SQL migration file created for me. And what this does is it alters the common stable and adds a new column. And yeah, now the final step is actually me just applying these migrations to my database. And for that, I actually have another script called db migrate. And what this script does is really just runs a script that's located in source db migrate.ts. So let's actually check it out. So source db migrate.ts. Now here, this is interesting because what this does is we have a migrate function that's provided by Drizzle. And the way this works is you pass it a database connection and the location of the migrations folder. So for me, that is source slash db slash migrations. And this actually should be the absolute path. And when this script runs, we're going to migrate. And if something goes wrong, we'll get an error. Otherwise, we will see migration successful. Now to actually establish a connection to the database, and this is the neat part, Drizzle actually doesn't ship with its own database client. You actually bring your own client. And the added benefit is that if there's a database client that you want to use that has a specific feature that isn't supported in another database client, well, you can just swap them out. So Drizzle actually ships with different adapters for different uh, database drivers. So for example, here, I'm importing Drizzle that works with the Neon Serverless driver. So the Neon Serverless driver is a Postgres driver that makes it possible for you to query database from serverless and edge functions. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, you can like, I'll leave a link down below if you want to learn more about it. And you can see here that Drizzle here has a specific, this is a specific function for the Neon serverless driver. And for example, there's one for also like Postgres.js. There's also one, I believe, for Node Postgres. And yeah, so let's actually keep it to, you know, the Neon serverless driver. So in this case, what we're doing is first, we're connecting to the, the database with the Neon serverless driver, and then we're wrapping this connection with Drizzle. And that's how we actually have this DB instance. And this DB instance will actually contain like, you know, all of our queries. And this is how, like we're gonna look into querying now um, just in a little bit, but I'll actually run the migration. So you'll see here, I actually have the database URL specified in my .env file and you know, this is an example file. You'll just add the connection string here and it would just work. So I can just, let's clear this. And now let's do bun db migrate. And you'll see that migration was successful. And actually, if we go to the Neon console, we'll see, you know, that all the tables were created and everything. But now let's actually talk about querying. Now, when it comes to queries, Drizzle offers two APIs, a SQL-like API and a relational API. Let's take a look at both. So in my project, I have a script called seed.ts that I will run using the dbseed command. So this script, really all it does is it sees the database because right now I don't have any data. So let's take a look at it. So if I go to dbseed.ts, you'll see that first I'm establishing a connection to the database using the Neon serverless driver. Then I'm creating a new DB instance. And this is just drizzle. Like I'm using the drizzle function that takes the database connection as well as my schema, which is imported from the schema.ts file. And now I just have a single function called main and I'm running it. And inside this function, I'm seeding my database. So what I'm doing is first, I'm deleting all the data from the different tables. And the way you do it with Drizzle is you have db.delete and then the table name. So actually this is fully type safe because of this pattern, because we're importing, you know, like from 
our schema where we specify the types, we actually have all the type safety here whenever we're writing queries. So here, this is the equivalent of saying delete from comments, delete from posts, delete from users. So this is just gonna delete all the records. And then we're actually inserting data into the users table and we're saying we want to insert multiple values and that's why we're passing in an array. So yeah, like this is the same for posts and the same for comments. Now, let's say for example that I thought that each user had an age and this actually wasn't defined at my schema. So I can do, for example, age and then 25 and you'll notice that we have a type error and that's because there's a mismatch in types and once we remove it, it will go away. And all of this without any code generation, all the types are inferred because we're importing the tables in our queries. So yeah, and if we do command space, you'll see that we have auto completion. And if we remove required fields, we'll get a type error and you will see that name and email are required. So that's it for the SQL like API. If we do db dot, you'll see that, you know, there's like updates, transactions, and there's a lot of stuff. But let's actually talk about the relational API. So whenever you want to actually query data that exists across multiple tables, the queries can get a, bit, a little bit complicated, but Drizzle actually offers a simple way to do this sort of queries with the relational API. So the first thing that we need to do is in our schema, we need to have the relations defined. No, not this one, this one. So we need to actually define explicitly what the relations are between the different tables. And we do it right here. So what we're saying is that the posts, like each post will have one user. So we have this one function and we're referencing the ID from the user's table and we have comments and we're saying that each post will have many comments. For users, each user will have many posts and each comments will have one post and one user because you know a comment will belong to a single post and the comment will be made by a single user. Now this actually doesn't do anything at the database level. This is just at the application level. So it's not like there aren't any implicit constraints happening here. If you want any constraints, they need to be uh, explicitly defined in the table itself. So yeah, by doing this, we actually have a relational API. So actually, if I go to, let's say my index.ts file, I have this right here. So I can do db.query.posts.findMany and saying with comments true and users true. So this will get me all of the posts with their user and comments. So actually, and all of this is like type safe and you get auto completion. So you do query dot, and then you see the different tables that are available. So it's pretty neat. So now actually let's do bun dev and we get a localhost 3000. You will see that now we get a, an array and these are our posts. We have three posts, but we get, you know, the post itself with its comments and the author, which is very, very convenient. And that's it. This is how you can get started with Drizzle ORM. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out down below or ask us in the Neon Discord community. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.